What's going on hikers? In today's video, I'm going to be bringing you seven things that no one tells you when you first start backpacking. If you're new to backpacking, uh, these are things that hopefully will help you keep from making mistakes and help you set your expectations in the right place as you head out into the backcountry. And if you're a seasoned backpacker, I'm sure you can relate to the seven things I'm about to tell you. And make sure you comment below and share some more things that no one tells you when you first start. If you're new to the channel, my name is Jeremiah Stringer and here we talk about all things hiking and backpacking. So if you're into that kind of thing, consider subscribing to the channel. That's what this entire channel is all about. So starting off with number one, one thing that somebody didn't tell me when I first started backpacking is this is not television, this is not Survivor Man, this is not let's go out into the woods and do some bushcraft. This is let me take the proper pieces of gear with me so that I can have a good time and I don't have to bring a crap load of stuff. When you're, when you're first starting um, your backpacking journey, you'll probably be like, you know, I'm going to need a giant, a giant Bowie knife. You know, one of those big Rambo ones. That's what I took when I first started. I took, uh, you know, multiple ways to make fire, which is good. I probably didn't need, you know, five fire starters for a four day trip whenever you're just walking on a trail. Don't get me wrong. It's great to be prepared out there, but <laughs> you're not Bear Grylls. I'm not Bear Grylls. Um, you're probably, if you're watching this video, not going out there to survive for two weeks, you know, until somebody rescues you. Number two. Backpacking can get expensive, so be prepared to spend money. But probably what's going to happen is you'll start, you'll get some budget gear, you'll learn what you like and don't like about that gear, and then you'll spend more and more money getting new pieces of gear, figuring out what you like. So the second thing that nobody tells you is be prepared to spend a lot of money trying to figure out what fits your needs. There's so many things that you can do to customize and tailor your gear to what you want. And what I want in the backcountry is probably not what you want. So <laughs> open up the wallet because here it comes. Number three, it's not all sunshine and rainbows out there in the backcountry. When I first started backpacking, I'm watching these through hiking videos. These people are going on these amazing journeys. They're meeting so many great people. They're having so much fun, lots of laughter, lots of those just kumbaya moments. And I'm watching videos like this one where people are giving advice and they're sharing their trip videos. But sometimes we fail to see all the tough times, all the times that, you know, you're walking and it's raining all day. You walk 10 or 20 miles and it's sleeting in your face. You're soaking wet, you're cold, and you're like, I can't stop because I gotta stay warm. I gotta keep going. Or maybe you forget a piece of gear. Like on my last backpacking trip, I was at Land Between the Lakes with all these super cool people. And you know what I did? Our first campsite, not one, perfect. Our second campsite, not two. I forgot my suspension for my hammock around the trees at campsite one. So I ended up having to make my own ridge line for my tarp. Otherwise, <laughs> I was sleeping under the stars. So if it rained, I was for sure getting wet. So just keep in mind, it's not always gonna be sunshine and rainbows. And it is important to be prepared out there, both mentally, physically, and with your gear. And that actually brings me to today's video sponsor, which is Okupa. They sent me this hand warmer slash battery pack. And I was like, I'll try it out. And then I did, and I liked it. And they were like, would you be interested in doing a sponsored video? And I was like, yeah, sure. You know, I've been enjoying your product this entire winter season. It's been going on every backpacking trip this whole winter. So I'm gonna tell you a little bit about it real quick. And if you want, you can go check it out in the link below. I'll put it in the description and you can read more about it and see if it fits your budget and fits your needs in the backcountry. So a couple of cool things. Uh, this hand warmer is also a battery pack. You can get different size battery packs. This one is a 10,000 milliamp hour. So it'll charge your phone, your headlamp, whatever device. Its inputs are a USB-C, excuse me, and a micro USB. And then its output is just a standard USB. It has one button on it and it does a few different things. It's gonna turn on and warm up this hand warmer. It's got three settings. I only use the first setting. That is gonna conserve the most amount of power and it's very warm. The second setting is over 100 degrees and I don't need that kind of heat next to my body. So the first setting's fine for me and it has a third setting which is, which is the highest heat setting. I think it's about 130 degrees. So I actually probably would never use that. It's gonna kill the battery the fastest 
And on top of that, who needs 130 degrees next to their body, right? Um, definitely don't want to get burned using this product. So if you are going to use it, just be cognizant of the needs for you. Um, another thing, they come in an assortment of different colors. So if you want to click that link, you can see that. And if you're wondering about how long this lasts, well, the more you charge a, a device with it, of course, the less it's going to last because it's a battery bank. So you're using the juice in it. So if you're not charging anything, I can get about 15 hours. Now the weight on this thing, it is a luxury item. It is 200 grams. So if you're a gram weenie, you're probably not bringing luxury items like this on the trail anyway. So, you know, I'm not a gram weenie really. So I'm perfectly fine with bringing this on trail with me. It actually has replaced my hot hands you know, throughout the night. A lot of times I'll pop hot hands and I actually preferred this because if you look behind me, <laughs> you see that hole? That hole was burned into my underquilt by hot hands. I just stuck the underquilt in my backpack and then threw the hot hands after using them throughout the night. Just threw them in there, didn't think anything about it. So this is an alternative if you're somebody who is using hot hands. So thanks again, Okupa for sponsoring today's video. And again, you all can check out the link in the description if you wanna read, research more about it, or if you wanna purchase one for yourself. Number four, <laughs> no one told me that zero drop shoes will absolutely destroy your legs if you're not breaking them in and getting your calves and your gait and everything adjusted for those zero drop shoes. So I'm not gonna go into deep explanation here, but I will tell you a little bit about my experience. Ultra. They're a super popular shoe company for backpacking. They make these zero drop shoes, which essentially mean that your heel and the balls of your feet, they're at the same angle. They're just flat on the ground. Most shoes, they have a slight heel to them. So your calves throughout just daily life have grown accustomed to having a slight incline on the heel. Well, we did the Foothills Trail and my wife, she, we got three or four days in. You know, we're doing 10 to 15 mile days and they absolutely destroyed her legs. I mean, she hadn't broke her shoes in by wearing them a whole lot at work. So there's nothing wrong with zero drop shoes, but if you're gonna wear them, I would probably wear them around town, around, wear them around work to get your legs and stuff adjusted to them because she actually had to quit the trail, literally couldn't walk anymore. You know, she's kind of limping along and we're carrying all of her stuff. Me and two other friends carried her backpack and, and everything that she brought. So um, zero drop shoes. <laughs> I, I like them, but make sure that you know you'll have to get your, your legs accustomed to them. Number five, you're going to bring way too much stuff on your first trip. I actually not too long ago found a list of everything I brought on my first trip and I was like, what was I thinking? You know, I, I didn't bring the right gear and I brought way too much gear and way, way, way too much food. I bet I left trail with an extra two or three pounds of food for a four day trip. What was I thinking? So I'm telling you right now, cause nobody else has, you're gonna bring way too much stuff on that first trip. But you know what? Get out there, enjoy it, <laughs> embrace that suck. And you're gonna figure out what you need. And that leads right into number six on our list. It doesn't matter how much research you do. You're, you, there's no substitute for experience. I've been on quite a few trips in my lifetime since I started backpacking and I'm still learning something new on every single trip that I go on. So I really love that you watch videos like this. I really love that you help support channels like mine and others, but it doesn't matter how many videos you watch until you get out into the backcountry and you start seeing you know, what do I do in this situation? What do I need gear wise in this situation? Who do I like backpacking with? All these different factors. I'm telling you, there is no, there is no substitute for the experience that you're going to have in the backcountry. Number seven, <laughs> the most unfortunate point in today's list. Calories, especially on like weekend backpacking trips are not unlimited in the backcountry. And let me tell you what I mean by this. You, you hear about through hiking and you hear about hiker hunger and you know sometimes you'll take these weekend trips and on one hand some people are like you know I don't really get that hungry whenever I'm in the woods. I eat this much at home but whenever I'm out there and I'm actually backpacking and getting exhausted from putting in these miles I don't get super hungry so I don't need a lot of food. And then on the other hand 
you have people that are like, I'm absolutely ravenous in the backcountry. I'm always hungry. I could always eat. I'm burning through these calories. My body's like a machine, baby. You got to feed the machine. Well, I'm more of the latter, but whenever I come back home, I have still input all those calories. You know, you are burning a lot of calories because essentially you're wearing a weighted vest. You have walked around town at a certain weight, and then you've added 10, 20, maybe even 50 pounds. I don't know how much your gear weighs. So when you're out there, you're burning more calories than you would normally burn probably at home. But those calories, <laughs> I never expend all of them on a backpacking trip. So keep in mind, calories are not unlimited, especially when you're out in the backcountry just doing two or three days. If you enjoy videos like these, Make sure you give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and comment below what are some things that no one told you when you first started. And if you like this type of content, I will make another video like this because I've had a lot of fun. So we'll see you in the next one.